just a quick session to follow up on understanding your, your BVM. So we have uh, two devices. This is the, the Laredell system. And again, just to review the components, we have a reservoir bag. Uh, we have two valves in the back. One's an air intake uh, valve, and that's meant to uh, uh, entrain air in case you have the patient hooked up, uh, but you're not supplying any oxygen. Um, and it uh, has a safety outlet valve in case you're, you're providing too much flow. And then you have a one-way valve between the reservoir bag and the, uh, the manual bag here to obviously you know, give one-way flow from the reservoir ultimately to the front of your, uh, of your system. In the front, in this particular system, and this is what makes it unique and different from others, there are two valves. There's a duct bill valve, and then below it, there's a secondary um, expiratory valve. And uh, this makes this, if you have a, a closed, uh, if you have a good seal, um, essentially a closed system. Now you'll always entrain a little bit from these valves back here, these safety valves, the air in, in, inflow. And so as long as you've got a, a tidal volume, uh, sorry, you, you've got a minute elevation that matches the, uh, is less than the flow that you're supplying from the wall, you should be able to give close to 100%, probably a range of 95% with this, with this system. Begin, again, that assumes that, that uh, you have um, adequate flow. So this currently is hooked up to 15 liters. So when I hook this up here, you'll see the bag inflate. And then I'm gonna put it on my face and I'm gonna just breathe normal tidal volume breaths, as you're gonna see here. And if you come closely, you'll see this duct bill valve open. So I'm getting close to 95% uh, oxygen in this way, but what I'm gonna do is, assuming I'm sick, um, I'm gonna increase my respiratory rate and my tidal volumes are gonna um, creep up towards vital capacity breath, so let's see. It doesn't take much for that, that bag to co collapse, so here my minute ve ventilation is exceeding the flow that's coming into the system. So what we can do is still go upwards of 15 liters. So I can take this up to flush, right? So it's, it's going beyond 15, to that actually go beyond 15. This shouldn't give you actually in this system apparently more than, uh, than 30 liters per minute. Now again, that's normal breathing. And now again, if I increase my respiratory uh, rate and my tidal volume, I'm able to match um, my minute ventilation, okay? So that's one system. Now what I'm gonna do is again, show you a very different system. And, uh... All right, folks, so this is a very different device than, than uh, this uh, Laredell BVM. They look the same, different colors, but, but different device. Um, so let's just go over how they're different. In the back end, they're the same um, in terms of components. They have a reservoir bag, they have uh, two valves here between the reservoir bag and the manual bag. One's an air intake uh, um, valve to sort of prevent you from suffocating the patient. And another one is a, uh, is a safety uh, valve so you don't provide too much flow. Um, if you get really high uh, flow through here, it'll leak out through there. And this is the reason why you can't provide 100% even in a closed system because you will always entrain a little bit of air through there. As a one-way valve, I'm here between the reservoir bag and the manual bag that obviously helps us go, uh, helps us take our, our flow from reservoir bag um, to manual bag to the front end. The front end is where this really differs. So the front end as opposed to this one, which has a duct bill valve and a separate expiratory valve. This just has a, a single duct bill valve that's meant to uh, um, give you one way flow in this direction to the patient and then divert um, flow uh, um, out here with, with expiration. Sounds simple, sounds good. The problem is, is that, uh, um, that you will entrain through here. This is meant to be an expiratory port, 
But what will happen is that if you're breathing at a, at a high rate and you've got a high minute ventilation and you can't supply it through this system, it's going to entrain through here, it's going to dilute your oxygen delivery and you're going to deliver lower FiO2. Some say in the spontaneously breathing patients, these will deliver anywhere from 50 to 70 percent, but you're not going to get the, uh, the near 100 percent you get uh, with this system. So the way to fix that, first of all, is, is to convert this into a closed system. And uh, um, just again, to, to prove a point, um, again, if I block this off here, right? I'm breathing out through here, but I'm also breathing in through here. So this is going to be a potential source of dilution here. If I put a PEEP valve on here, and I don't have to, you know, dial in PEEP, this now creates a, a closed system. So now here, if I block this off and I breathe through it, okay, so it's only allowing my expiration in, in, uh, in this direction and I can only uh, get uh, um, inflow through your, your, your system here. Um, so this is a spontaneously breathing patient. The only way you can deliver close to uh, the intended concentration of oxygen um, is by having an attached PEEP valve. Both of these, most of these will deliver adequate uh, oxygen um, if you're matching the patient's breath and, and assisting them, but that's a different story. So we're talking about oxygenation in the spontaneously breathing patient. You need to know your equipment and recognize that they're not all the same.